Do you have a bunch of external hard drives with your images scattered all over them? I'm going to talk about using a NAS to simplify your life on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you know what to do. Just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick your question and answer right here on a future show. Today's question was sent in by Paul E. and he wants to know, Hi, David. I use Lightroom Classic to organize, edit, and export my pictures on both a desktop and a laptop. I would love to have my catalog on a NAS or an external drive so I can access it from either computer. Is this possible? Thanks, Paul. I've actually received questions like this over the years, along with others asking about managing large image archives and backups. In an older video, I did mention that I had a NAS system for all of that, but I didn't go too deep into it because it was a new setup for me. Well, now I'm happy to say I'm a couple of years in and I finally got my system dialed in exactly how I want. So Paul, I'm going to talk about sharing your Lightroom catalog a little bit later in the video, but I'm also going to use your question as an excuse to talk about using a NAS for storage. As always, there are chapter markers down below if you want to skip around the video to the part that you're looking for. Now, here's the problem. As photographers, we deal with an overwhelming number of images and file sizes are getting larger and larger. I know there's an argument to be made about not actually keeping all of the files we shoot, and I totally get that. Personally, I keep almost everything. You just never know. I'll tell you a quick personal story. Years ago, the photographer who documented many of my family's important events passed away, unfortunately. His name was Alan Moss, and someone, either in his family or at his photo studio, gave my mother everything from his files. And they were all film negatives, of course, and there were so many pictures that I had never seen. There's a photo of my brother and I when he was five and I was one year old. This is the shot that my parents had hanging in the house when we were young. However, going through those files, I found an image that I just love. It's really a much better representation of our personalities, with me crying hysterically about who knows what, while my brother is totally unaffected. There were also a lot of really wonderful portraits of my parents and grandparents that I had never seen. Needless to say, I'm glad that Alan didn't throw out those outtakes. So in today's digital world, we do shoot a lot more images, and I understand they're harder to manage compared to a file cabinet full of negatives. Some people leave their photos on memory cards, which I hope you don't do, or they just keep them on their computers, which is also kind of a big no-no because you've got limited space and no backups. Many photographers use an external hard drive. That's actually a great option until you fill it up, which you will, and then you need to buy another drive. When that one fills up, you get another one, and so on and so on and so on, until over the years you wind up like I did, having more than a dozen of these various drives sitting around and it becomes a nightmare to find anything when you need it. Plus, there's no backup unless you buy two of every drive, which just doubles your problem. Now this is when you might consider a NAS. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It's simply a storage device that's able to be attached to your network. Makes sense, right? Think of it like a centralized hub for all your data storage that you can access from anywhere. Now you can either build your own NAS from scratch or you can buy a pre-made solution. For those who like to tinker and have some tech knowledge, building your own NAS could be a fun project. But for most of us, buying a pre-made solution is the way to go. There are a few big players out there, and I chose Synology for my personal use. The company's been around for a long time, and I've just found their NAS systems to be reliable and pretty easy to use. They also make some really useful software as well. Now, when you're buying hard drives for your NAS, you can't just get any old regular hard drives. Because a NAS runs 24-7, you need drives specifically made for that purpose. Usually, they're listed as enterprise drives. Now, I'm using the 16 terabyte Synology Plus drives because I know that they're compatible with the Synology NAS. Not all drives are, so make sure that you look up on the Synology site to see which ones they recommend. Their drives also have things like automatic firmware updates, which I didn't even know was a thing. And of course, all the great warranties that come with the Synology gear. But what advantages do you actually get by using a NAS over single drives? Well, the main factors are protection, scalability, accessibility, and speed. Let me break all those down. First, let's talk about protection. Technically, a NAS can be made with just one single hard drive, but you usually use more than one and they work together so that it only looks like one big hard drive to your computer. Normally, you'll set it up using one of the types of RAID, R-A-I-D, which stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. It's a way to combine multiple hard drives into a single unit that provides data redundancy. 
Now, I'll be honest, it does all seem like magic to me, and I don't completely understand the tech behind RAID and exactly how it works. Depending on which RAID type you use, you do give up some space for one or two of your hard drives. You give up that amount of space, but it means that if any of those drives fails, you just replace the bad drive with a new one, and it's gonna rebuild your data so you don't lose anything. That's crazy cool and super important if you don't wanna lose your images. Remember though, our, all hard drives do fail. It's not if, but when. Maybe you've been lucky and haven't had an important hard drive crash on you, but trust me, it's not something you want to happen. I can tell you from personal experience, it just has to happen to you once before you decide to get your act together. The RAID in my NAS is one piece of the puzzle. Each type of RAID has its own characteristics, and I chose the Synology Hybrid RAID SHR1. Whichever one you choose, having RAID set up in my NAS gives me some peace of mind that I'm covered from a hard drive failure. Now the NAS also protects against bit rot. That's a phenomenon, it sounds kind of funny, but that's a phenomenon where older data on hard drives become corrupted over time. Typically what you do is you start up each drive occasionally to ensure data, integri data integrity. You wanna make sure those drives are still readable and there's no corruption. That's a huge pain and honestly, most people, most normal people never do it. However, using Synology's BTRFS file system, you can set up data scrubbing. This process automatically checks and repairs corrupted data. And I have mine set to run every three months and that ensures that my images are gonna remain intact and accessible. The next advantage of using NAS, as I said, is scalability. Now I've got the Synology DS1821 Plus, which holds up to eight hard drives. I also have the DX517 expansion unit, which gives me space to add five more hard drives. Now I've got mine filled up with data. Yes, I have well over hundred terabytes, but you can start just with a couple drives and add more as your storage needs grow. I highly recommend starting with the biggest drives you can afford and using fewer bays at first instead of filling it all up completely with smaller drives. Having those open drive slots just makes it easier to grow when you need it and then you can get the same level of data protection either way. For example, I just bought the Synology, uh, the 923 Plus right here. This is the 923 Plus, yes. I think I've become addicted to these things. I just can't stop buying Synology gear, um, but I'll tell you how I use each one of these later in the video. But anyway, this 923 is a four bay unit, but I only bought two 16 terabyte drives to put in it. Because one of those is gonna be used for protection and redundancy, I'll have 16 terabytes available for storage, even though I have 32 terabytes in there. Actually, each drive is really only 14 and a half terabytes because of the way the marketing speak that the, they use to label hard drives these days. But let's just stick, stick with saying 16 for simplicity. Now, even though the data is technically spanned across both hard drives, one of them can die and I can replace it without losing anything. Again, magic. But when I get close to filling that 16 terabytes, I can buy another 16 terabyte drive and just put it in the third bay of that DS923. Now I've got 32 terabytes of space. The third drive still means I've got data redundancy and I'm protected from any of those three drives failing. And of course, I can add a fourth drive when I need it. Hard drives are only gonna get bigger and cheaper, so I'd rather wait to buy new ones until I absolutely need them. Okay, now let's talk about accessibility. Instead of hooking it up directly to your computer using something like USB, you use an ethernet cable to connect the NAS up to your network router. That means that all your other devices can access it either locally or from anywhere in the world over the internet if you want. I can just mount it right on my Mac like any other drive, and that's how I access the data most of the time. I can also go in and manage the system if I need to. It's not just a hard drive, but it's actually a computer running its own operating system. So you can also allow permissions for other people to access files and have it automatically run software to back up all of your computers, phones, and tablets, whatever you want. You can even run a media server to store all your movies and music, run virtual machines, use it for your camera security system, and so much more. It's pretty cool stuff. And in addition, I use Synology's universal search to index every one of my photos. It reads the metadata from my files and creates a catalog that I can search. Granted, it's a bit slow because I do have over 100 terabytes of data, but I can enter anything like a keyword or a file name and it'll show me any file that matches that. That makes it really easy to find old images in my archive. And then one more advantage of using a NAS is speed. RAID uses multiple disks simultaneously, which can significantly increase your read and write speeds compared to a single drive. More hard drives in your NAS generally means more speed. 
Network speed is another big plus. Many NAS devices support super, super fast ethernet connections like two and a half or 10 gigabit ethernet. That can handle much higher data transfer speeds than a typical USB connection. This is crucial for video editors, photographers working with large files, or multiple users accessing the NAS simultaneously. Now, some models have optional features like SSD caching and NVMe SSDs to store frequently accessed data on faster drives. I know that's all tech speak, but the bottom line is the NAS can really become a high speed hub for all of your data. Now, something to always remember is that NAS is not a backup. I'll say it again, NAS is not a backup. RAID does prevent data loss from a hard drive crash, but if your entire NAS unit is lost from fire, flood, or theft, then you're just out of luck. The rule of thumb for backups is three, two, one. Three copies of your data, two different devices, and one more off-site. Synology does have some nice software like Hyper Backup, so you just need to figure out what works best for your particular needs. If your total amount of data is small enough, you could get one large external hard drive and just connect it to the NAS directly via USB, then have it automatically copy everything to that external drive every day or even every hour if you need. For me, I went all in and got another NAS for the backup, yes? I know, I told you I think I have an addiction, but this stuff just works so well that I can't help myself. I now have a 12 bay DS2422 that I'm using as my primary unit. Every night it uses the Synology snapshot and replication software to make an exact read-only copy of my entire system. It then copies everything to my other NAS over the internet. I have one here in my studio and the other one is in my apartment, but I can put that back up anywhere in the world. I know that even in the worst case scenario, I'll still have a copy of all of my data. Sidebar on setting this up for the first time, depending on how much data you have, it's probably better to have both units on the same local network. Copying over the internet is gonna be so much slower than working locally. It still took about a week because of all the amount of data I have, but after that finished, I moved the backup unit and now it does the automatic copy every night without me having to think about it at all. It's kind of awesome. Now to finish off my 321 backup, I do have a third version of some of my work in the cloud. I've used photoshelter.com for many years because they handle my website, archive, and distribution of my images for clients. Cloud storage, however, can get expensive quickly, so I upload only my most important images to Photoshelter, but I always have access to my full archive on the NAS. Okay, now Paul, to your specific question about sharing your Lightroom Classic catalog between multiple computers. You can absolutely do it with just one external hard drive. The easiest way is to just keep your catalog and images together on that drive and then designate the catalog as the default one in your Lightroom preferences. Just make sure that the drive is attached and mounted before you launch Lightroom and you should be good to go. You should use the fastest drive and connection your computer will allow. A normal hard drive is probably not gonna be fast enough to do any editing if it's external, so you should use an SSD over USB 3 or Thunderbolt if you can. You also need to be very careful because if that cord comes out while you're working, you could get some data corruption and might lose images. Don't forget to back up your catalog when you're done working. Personally, it makes me nervous editing off an external drive, so I try not to do that ever. Another way to go though is to use a NAS as you asked. You can store your catalog and images on there, but the catch is that Adobe won't let you access your Lightroom catalog directly from a network attached drive. It assumes that you're working over the internet and that's gonna be way too slow and might also cause some corruption. So the best way to do it is to use a program called Synology Drive. What that does is it downloads the files as you're working so you're editing on your local hard drive using the smart previews that Lightroom can create but you keep the high-res files on your NAS and only access them when needed to export your process photos. That can happen automatically. That means you can work on the road as well, even if you have terabytes of images back at home on the NAS. Synology Drive keeps the catalog in sync, so when you switch to another computer, when you go between your desktop and your laptop, as you asked, Paul, it'll download the new catalog so you can work over there on that other machine without missing a beat. So Paul, to answer your question, yes, you can use your Lightroom Classic catalog on a NAS or on an external hard drive. Remember though that a NAS does give you so much more. By centralizing your storage with a NAS using RAID, you gain protection through data redundancy, scalability to expand as your needs grow, accessibility from anywhere in the world, and the speed necessary for efficient file management. Sounds fancy, right? Are you wondering if NAS is right for you? Well, if you're a hobbyist with only a small amount of data, individual hard drives might be sufficient. Just remember to at least back up to a second hard drive. 
But as your needs grow, you should think seriously about getting a NAS. I never thought I would have all of these NAS boxes that I have. I worked on hard drives for a long time, but now I can never look back. You could start with a smaller model like this DS923 Plus. Once you've got everything set up, you basically automate most of it so that you can spend more time out making great photos. I'm pretty excited about my current setup. I do have access to my entire archive no matter where I am in the world. It backs up automatically to another NAS in a different location, and I'm gonna use this new four bay unit to back up my computers, devices, and share files with clients. Of course, there's an upfront cost for all of this, but I can eliminate some of the monthly fees from the cloud services I've been using for years, like Dropbox and Backblaze. There's also a bit of a learning curve and it helps if you're a little geeky, but personally, I can't put a price on the protection of my life's work. What do you all think? Do you have experience with a NAS for your photography workflow? Let me know in the comments below. If you have your own photo questions, head over to askdavidbergman.com and ask away. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the Adorama YouTube channel and ring that bell icon to get notified about new videos when they come out. Thanks for watching and I'll be back here next time with a brand new question right here on Ask David Berg.